Okay, so welcome back to math. We are doing decimals to the thousandths place. We're going to write the thousands as fractions and decimals. I can write a decimal to the thousandths place as a fraction. I can write a fraction involving thousandths as a decimal. We're going to divide the square into 10 equal parts. So I'm going to divide it into 10 equal parts. I'm going to get a blue or something. Let's count how many is in the square. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10. So I can just draw down the lines. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now I made 9 lines, and but there's 10 spots, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now it says we're going to shade in one part. So I'm going to take a colored pencil. I don't really care what color you're using. I'm going to shade in one piece of my 10 pieces. So it says what whole part or what part is shaded? So I shaded in one part, right? Out of how many pieces? How many parts? One out of ten pieces. Now, how do I write that fraction as a decimal? Put, just push hard, sweet pea. Push, push, push. There you go. And then shut hard, hard, hard. Yes, 0 0.1. So when I think of this, I go back to my cute little chart we used the other day. And when I'm talking decimals, there are 10, the 0, so there's my decimal point, decimal point 1, and this is tenths, right? There are 10 dimes in a dollar. So point 0.1 means it's 10 cents. So that's how I try to keep it like in my head. That's how I keep it square in my head. Then it says divide each of the 10 parts into 10 equal parts. All right, here we go. I'm drawing lines the other way. I'm gonna use a different color just so you can see it better. You don't have to use a different color. You can still use a pencil light. But if I go the other way, I'm dividing them each. into little parts. Why, what, what? I'm not super picky. As long as you can just like kind of see what you did. Does that make sense? I'm going to pull a different color. I don't know if I can see this. Yeah, I think we can see it okay. If I color this one red, it says color one part using a different color. Can you see it that okay? Yeah. yeah, all right. So now I have to write a fraction. Well, I have one colored with the reddish color, right? Thanks. <laughs> So I have one part out of how many pieces? If I count all the little squares, how many little squares are in the whole monkey? One out of a hundred, you are right. Now, this is the way I think of this. I have one out of a hundred. What amount, what coin is a dollar worth so many, what, what, what coin does it take a hundred to get to a dollar? Let's 
ask that that way. It is a penny. So how do I write one cent with a decimal? Yes, zero decimal zero one. That means one penny. So that's actually equal to one cent, right? Or one penny. This is actually equal to 10 cents or a dime. Does that make sense to you guys? I'm only comparing it back to money because we all like money, right? Is there anybody in this room that doesn't like money? You don't like money? Dude, money can buy you cool school stuff. What? It cannot buy you happiness, but I gotta be honest with you, nice, cool, fun pens makes me quite happy. It doesn't buy me happiness, but it makes me happy. Yarn makes me happy. It can buy quiet though, because I one time paid my niece a nickel every time for every minute she was quiet. It was the best quarter I ever spent. She lasted five minutes. It was beautiful. What? Shoot, what was I thinking? Okay, back to business. If you divide each of the each of the hundred equal parts into ten equal parts, how many parts will the model have? Ooh. So if I divide one of these into 10, but I divided all of these into 10, how many pieces do I have then? Ask you. So if I have 100 pieces, and I split 100 pieces into 10, I'm really multiplying 100 times 10, which would give me 1,000. What? Oh, it is 1,000. What was I thinking? I'm sorry. I'm still on weekend brain. I'll get there. Yeah, you're right. 1,000 pieces. For some reason, I was thinking we are multiplying it by 100, not 1,000, 100 times 100, which would be 10,000. If you shade one of those parts, what part of the whole is shaded? So if I shade one out of 1,000 pieces, it's one over 1,000. How do I write that as a decimal? Yep, y'all have weekend brain too, don't ya? Yep. Yep, we do, Miss Richardson. Okay, let's look. If the first one, oops, if the first one is the tenths, and we said the tenths is a dime, right, or ten cents. The next one is a hundredths or a penny. And every time we move one spot, we split it by ten. Basically, if you're going this way, you're dividing it by 10 or splitting it by 10. So the next hop would be, make it the what place? Thousand. So it would be zero point, so that'd be zero point zero zero one. I know you knew that back there. I was just trying to make sure everybody got it, okay? Zero point zero zero one. So if we're looking, what, what changes as we add, so if I have one tenth, it's 0 0.1. One hundredth, 0 0.01. One thousandth, 0 0.001. So the tenth is in the tenths place. The hundredths is in the hundredths place. The thousands is in the thousands place. Every time you add a zero, you move your decimal one place to the right. Question. Like, 
It, oh, so it's like it's looking like it's getting bigger, but it. You do know the. It is kind of backwards to us. It's backwards to what we're thinking. Now, the more the zeros are in. Uh, uh, I need a tongue. All right, so here's my decimal. The more zeros that are between the decimal place and the number, the smaller the number gets. So this is worth a dime. It's just one place to the right of the decimal. This is worth a penny. It's two places to the right of the decimal. This is a thousandth. It's three places. If I added another zero, is my number going to get bigger or smaller? Smaller. Okay. Turn the page. Turn the page. I'm sorry. What did you say? You think it would be what? Yeah, it'd be one ten thousandth. Yep. Good job. All right. Key idea. The in a decimal, the third place to the right of the decimal point is the thousandths place. The big thing you need to know when you're writing thousandths is it has this cute little THS on it. You don't add the THS, I think you're saying 1,000. There's a huge difference between a thousand dollars and a thousandth. A thousandth is less than a penny, and a thousand dollars will buy you that sweet gaming system you've been wanting, right? Or whatever really cool thing. I can't even imagine how much yarn a thousand dollars would buy me. Oh. Yarn, thousand dollars worth of yarn. Thousand dollars is not all that much if you want to pay bills. Spoke like a practical person, yes. I know, but thousand dollars worth of yarn versus a thousand dollars worth of bills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it, uh, way better in food, is that you said? All right, you've got a foodie in the midst. Um, you can write thousands as a fraction or decimals. So if we're writing 5,000 as a decimal, you're going to... Now we always put a zero in the ones place. The zero in the ones place just tells me that the decimal's coming. Because we don't put zero in front of 100, right? We just put a zero in front of the decimal. Now I need to know that five is in the thousands place. But if I don't put anything in the tenths or the hundredths place, it looks like I have 50 cents. Do I have to put the zeros in here? Yes. yes. Without the zeros in there, I'm in trouble. It's a big difference between 50 cents and 5 thousandths. It's a huge difference. Does that kind of make sense? So you just got to find the place and then you pop the number into the place and everybody else gets zeros. Now, let's look at this one. This number is 555 thousandths. The thousandths tells me the last number, five, is in the thousandths place. So I need to put this five in this thousandths place. <clears throat> now, like when we said write the number and then read it, right? So this would be 555. Where's the rest of my numbers going to go? Right in front. So if I say 555, then I have to make sure that the last five is right below the thousandths place. Did I put the zero in front of my ones? No, but it helps so that everybody knows that I know what I'm talking about. All right, let's try. Oops, let me put the 0 0.555. How would you write this decimal as a fraction? So first I need to figure out what place is it in. So this is tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So it's going to be 9 over what? 1,000. Any guesses on what we're going to do for number two?
Or if you know, pop your hand up. So it's going to be 63, so I'm going to take the whole number here, and then I'm going to pop it over 1,000, because my friend said it's tenths, hundredths, thousandths, right? Well, my last one has a three-digit number. I wonder what that might be over my decimal. It's over a thousand, yep. And I know that because this is tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Takes ten dimes, hundred pennies, and then that would be like a thousand not pennies to make a dollar. I'm starting to figure this out, Miss Richardson. Thumbs up. Thumbs to the side or thumbs down? Okay, that's kind of what I was thinking. Thank you. Write the fraction as a decimal. Now, now they're asking us to do the opposite. So I need to know how many place values this is going to be. I'm going to use my chart. You don't have to use your chart, but I'm going to use my chart. So. Here's my cutesy tootsy little chart. And I know that my one number has to be in the thousandths position, right? And it said, three thousandths. So I'm gonna go to my thousandths and I'm gonna put my number what there? Three. So is that the right answer, do you think? I did 3,000. Hello? Anybody awake out there? In Miss Richardsonville? Well, I don't like to put zeros. That's a lot of work. Somebody's told me too bad. I heard that. I know that was you. Ah, uh, I do. I have to put the zeros because if I don't put the zeros there, what happens? It's not the right. It's not the right answer. So I have to put. I'm just putting willy nilly sticky notes to cover my big number. Probably should have just whited it out before I started this mess, but I didn't. Um, so I have to. Uh, how many? How many whole dollars do I have? Do I have any whole dollars in here? Nope. So I have to put a zero in the ones place, right? Because that tells me it's a whole dollar. How many tenths do I have in my number? Are there any tenths in there? Nope. Not in this one, because it's just three, and so three goes in the thousandths place. So there's no tenths and there's no, no hundredths. So I'm gonna put zero here for tenths and zero there for thousands. So it's going to be 0 0.003. What about this number 91? 91. So if it's 91 thousandths, what number has to be in the thousandths place? your answer you think you have? Um, 0 .091. You're right. So it is 0 
zero nine one. Now how I read this is this. What number remember when we were reading it, we would read it in each period. You remember that? And I would say just read the period that's there. Well, if I read the ones period, what is that an answer? Zero, right? So I have zero, and then when we read this, the decimal, we say and, so say and, and, and then how would you read this number? 90 what? Now I'm gonna look above the last number I said, and it's 91, and then right above the one is thousandths. So that's how I read the answer, it'd be 91 thousandths. Does that make sense to you? Fantastic. Any other questions before we move on? So you're understanding something because you know that it's 0 0.091, right? How would you write this answer? 607. Yes. So 607 would be 0 point. And it would be 6. Six zero seven. Oh, look, there's a seven right there. I'll put a seven anyway. Zero point six zero seven. So perfect. Now, how would I read this? Do I have anything in the ones period? So I would say zero, and then what do we say for the decimal point? And, and then what's that answer? Uh, do you read that number six zero seven? 607, and then you're looking above the 7, and it says thousands. There you go. See, I think you're understanding more than you think. It's just hard, so sometimes you think, oh, I don't really get it, but I think you'll get it. All right, turn the page. Then it says, write the decimal as a fraction. Now, let me show you the trick. Here's my trick. If I read this answer as 645, right, what am I going to write at the top? 645. Now, 645 is out of how many pieces? 1,000. So I'm going to put it over 1,000. Look at number 9, though. How would I read this number? 98. So is it going to be 98 over what? 100? Why is it over 100? Okay, so you are you are right, you're on the right track. So it is 98 because it's only two places you're only going to put two zeros. Look, one, two, three places beyond the decimal, one, two, three zeros. What about one place beyond the decimal? Six over ten. So one place beyond the decimal is one zero. Does that help? All of a sudden I had a brilliant moment. Ha ha! On a Tuesday after a long weekend. Ha ha! So how would I write this one as a fraction? This one might be tricky. I don't know. How would I write that as a fraction? Why are you saying two out of a thousand? It's got a bajillion zeros there. It is. It's two thousandths or two over a thousand. But what about all those zeros there? 
Oh. They are worth nothing when we're writing them as a fraction. If you're writing it as a decimal, do you need those zeros there? Yeah. Now, I don't need a zero in front of a whole number, but if I have, but if I'm in a decimal position, I do need a zero in front of the decimals. How would I write the fraction as a decimal? Hmm. Mm -hmm. How would I write this one as a frac as a decimal? Eight hundred eighty four. Right now, you're saying uh, this is worth $884. Is there something you need to do to change it from $884 to something different? Something you need to do to make it from something other than $884? Are you stuck or you know? What do you need to do? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Put it on small where? Where do I put the decimal at? Ah, good girl, in front of the eight. And I'm gonna put a zero there just to hold my place value so that I see the decimal. A lot of times you guys put little pokes there and I don't always see the decimal if you don't put the zero there. Great job. How would I write this one? Hmm. How do I write that one? <coughs> Number 12. That's fine. Well, what numbers would I write down? Okay, so I need to write an 8. Is there anything I need in front of the 8 or before the 8? Ah, good girl. Two zeros. So if I have three zeros, I know that I need to have three places, right? The 8 is 8 out of 1,000 or it's 8 thousandths. So tens, hundreds, thousands. So if there's three zeros, I know if it's eight over a thousand, I know that it needs to be the thousands place or there needs to be three zeros or it needs to be in the third place. What about 13? Thirty-nine. Okay, so is my answer right right now? Where? Before the zero? How many zeros are in the denominator? Two. So when I had three zeros in the denominator here, I have 884. There's three places after the decimal. When I had an eight and a thousand, a thousandths, I had three places after the decimal. Now I have 100. So I have two zeros. How many places do I need to have after the decimal? Two. So where do I need to put the decimal point at? After the zero, right? Perfect. Does that make sense now? Okay. I have one tenth. How do I write that as a decimal? Yes, zero decimal one. Because 
I have one zero. That means I have one place after the decimal. You guys making the connection? Okay. I think. Oh, I have 10 more minutes before special, right? Yeah. Okay. 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 Number 15 says 0 0.4 is one tenth of what number? Okay, we did a little bit of this a few days ago. One tenth of what number? What? Zero point four is one tenth of what number? What? Oh, oh, got you. Again. You are close. You guys are both thinking right. Look at this. 0 0.4 is the same as 0 0.40. Nope, it's the same because, look, I can cross that zero off and it's not going to change my number. So that's not one-tenth of 0 0.4. It says 0 0.4 is one-tenth of what number? So if I look at my number chart, here's my decimal, right? This is 4, and this is 0 0.4. This is tenths, and this is ones. How do I get, if I, if I multiplied by number by 1 tenth, which direction does multiplying by 1 tenth take me? Does it get a bigger number or a smaller number? So I multiplied... To get to 0 0.4, I had to multiply it, and it made it smaller. What number did I multiply by 1 tenth? What number would I have started out with? If the, the answer moved me 1 to the right, what number did I start with? I'm going to give you a minute to puzzle it out. If my answer moved me one place to the right, if multiplying by one tenth, you agree with me, right? One tenth is making my number smaller. If I multiplied a number by one tenth, what number did I start with? Hold on, I'll, I'll get you. If I multiplied my number by one tenth, what number did I start with? If I multiplied my number by one tenth, what did I start with? So basically what they're saying is I have a mystery number, Miss Richardson. I multiplied it by one tenth, and my answer is 0 0.4. What did I start with? What did I start with? What? Well, if I started with 40, and that is a good guess, if I started with 40, if I started with 40 and I multiplied it by 1 tenth, my 4 is going to go into what place? If I start with 40, and I multiply it by one tenth, my four is only going one place to the 
to the right. Is that four tenths? Is this four tenths? No, it's not. Oh, man. So can I start with 40 and end up with four tenths? No, because I had to take two hops to get to four tenths. Give them a minute. Let's see if they can get there, okay? Well, keep, I'll, I'll call on you, but let's see if they can get there. I only have to take one hop. I have to take one hop to the right, right? So if I multiply by one tenth and I jump to one place to the right, where did I have to start? Yes, you would have to start with four. If I started with four and I take one hop to the right, do I end up with four tenths? Yes. So I would have had to start with the answer four. I'd have to start with four to get to four tenths. Now number 16 says this. And I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you these are easy questions. They are not, they're asking you to think big thoughts, right? It's kind of like curiosity, right, in scientists. We've gotta be curious about numbers to understand how the numbers work. Says 0 0.52 is 10 times as great as what number? So if my answer is 0 0.52 and it says it is 10 times as great as what number? If I'm multiplying by 10, is my number getting bigger or smaller? It's getting bigger, right? So the number I have to end up with over here, it has to be smaller than what I started with. If I'm multiplying by one-tenth, my number had to be bigger to start with because one-tenth makes it smaller, right? Because remember they said take the one box and you're going to split it into ten pieces? I'm thumbs up. I think I'm getting this, Miss Richardson. As a whole. Thumbs to the side, I'm kind of getting it. Yeah, that's about what I figured. What I might do is give you guys an assignment and just kind of see where it shakes and bakes out. Because then I'll know what I need to reteach. Does that make sense to you? All right, so... If I'm going to end up at 0 0.52, I want to get through this one, then I'll give you a homework assignment, okay? If I want to end up at 0 0.52, 0. Oh, I need a 5, and I need a 2. If this is what I need to end up with, 0. 5, 2. Is that the, if that's the answer I need to end up with, and that's bigger than the number I started with, right? Because if I'm multiplying by 10, it's bigger than what I started with, right? How do I make a number smaller than 0 0.52? Which direction do I need to move it in? What way is that? I have to move it to the left because this is smaller than what I started with, right? So if I'm taking this number and I'm multiplying it by 10, am I going to end up with 0 0.52? Yes. These are not the ways we're used to looking at numbers. But good job. That was awesome, Sauce. I know this is hard. I am not even going to pretend it's not hard. It is hard. You guys are doing a great job. So multiplying it by 10 would be 0 0.052. Now look at homework. I think I'm just going to give you the straight up work for homework. 
I think I might give you. Let's do one to ten. I want to see if you guys can puzzle out nine and ten, or at least it'll give me an opportunity to kind of re-explain stuff if you are struggling with nine and ten. So if you do one to nine, one to ten today. Any questions on homework? All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.